Welcome, good evening. It's, um, you know, I, I think I said this last time, in 2019, Erica, who used to work with 475, invited me to come speak with her. And uh, I was super uncomfortable because I sort of thought, like, why am I going to be up there and not sitting, still learning and listening? So it's kind of fun to fast forward now and, um, you know, lots of familiar faces and feeling much more comfortable to be here and, and probably more excited than ever to be able to, to, to come with something that I truly believe in, like a, a message or a topic that I feel really strongly about now, having this sort of last, um, you know, six or seven years behind us. So yeah, uh, that's me, I'm Jeremy. I, I started Simple Life Homes in 2012 and then I took a little bit of a hiatus as uh, Ed mentioned, and <laughs> tried a bunch of other stuff. Music production, realized I didn't want to be a music producer, I just really like building recording studios. Um, and then, you know, Simple Life Homes is what I came back to. So who we are today now is, uh, just as of recently, I don't want to uh, say full-fledged developer, but we've partnered with some developers, and that's really exciting. I'll talk about that some more. It's an important part of where we're going. Uh, we're manufacturing. We have been since about 2017. Uh, like I mentioned, I was building straw bales. I cut my teeth in, in that sort of natural alternative world of, uh, of building, and that's really where uh, you know, my, my heart was at the beginning of all this. And uh, energy HVAC nerd and, and new and tired father. So. Uh, what I really want to talk about is, is prefab. You know, prefab is one word, but it means a lot of things. And so, depending on who you ask or who you talk to, you'll get a different answer. Uh, housing, the challenges that we're facing. Everybody knows um, we're in a housing crisis. That's what we've been hearing about. Um, but what does that actually mean? You know, like how do, what, do, what do we do? What's, what's next? And uh, process, prefab done right. This is, this is the big thing. The important thing is we can't just keep doing it the way that we've been doing it. So um, I hope that what I you know, chat about today will maybe influence how, uh, how, how we all work together. Uh, and why? Well, our friends at the CMHC said it all. The restore affordability. I mean, three and a half million houses, that's, that's countrywide, that's not just Ontario, but I think Ontario is about a million and a half of that. So, you know, we, we've got a lot to do here. Um, and because I think an important thing is that not just housing, but it's, it's got to be decent housing or, or not just decent housing, but healthy and affordable and efficient. You know, these are our fellow humans, not just, uh, not just uh, animals or whichever. I don't know. It, it, you know to me, this seems, seems like it, it has to be the baseline. And uh, Earth, our home, I think it's worth looking after. And we can't keep doing this the way we've been doing it. So what is prefab? Um, well, it's a product, that's what we do, yeah. It's a process, sure. Uh, is it sustainable? It can be. It can also not be. Uh, is it high performance? Yeah, it can be. And is it a pain in the ankle? Yeah, a lot of times it is. So without the right process, um, you know, we find ourselves in, in situations where prefab isn't being leveraged the way that it can or that I think it should be. Prefab categories, I think these generally are the ones that I want to talk about. Modular, panelized, and components. I'll expand on those a little bit in a moment. And uh, a method of building, and it's usually off-site, generally. So this is, this is uh, the simple form of, of what I want to elaborate on. So types of prefab, modular, uh, you know, usually a finished box, often uh, it can be plumbing, wiring, finishes inside of it. This has its place in the world, for sure. This isn't what we do at Simple Life Homes, but there's uh, lots of great builders out there doing this. Um, lots of times they're stitched together to make larger buildings. So you could have one modular unit, you could have you know, 50 or 100 to scale, it depends. Um, and some companies that, uh, that are doing this here locally are NRB, Gildercrest, Royal Homes. Now, these aren't all high performance <laughs> buildings that are being produced, but there's a lot of it happening and it could easily become high performance building. Uh, panelized, so this is what we do, that's our crew um, about two weeks ago out on Amherst Island putting together a house for a family out there. Uh, floor, wall and roof panels, sometimes they're flat packed, sometimes they're upright, um, depends who you're talking to. Variety of finish levels from basic framing, there's lots of companies out there doing just framing and sheathing and shipping that out. That's great, but I don't think it's enough. Um, so we need to take this opportunity to do as much value adding as we can off-site. Um, that's our focus. <clears throat> that's our focus anyways. Um, so sheathing, um, 
fully glazed, insulated envelope systems, really. And even if we could go as far as having cladding on the outside, I think that that is a really crucial item that we need to be adding. Uh, so of course, ourselves, we're doing this. Uh, Toot Tree, uh, they're great folks. And then there's some larger companies like Alpa or Panels.ca. Again, they're in a bit of a different category right now, but I think that all of these companies slowly, you know, as the building code rises, as the minimum expectation changes, that these companies could, uh, could follow suit. Uh, and components, you know, I think probably most of you are familiar with mass timber, uh, NLT, CLT, glue lamb, any of those components. They're still prefabricated, right? The point is they've been pre-designed. Uh, you, you, you've, you've hopefully worked out the, uh, the kinks in design and the issues in advance. You're putting value into these products off-site, and then you're bringing them to the construction site to be assembled. So some companies that are doing that locally, Nordic, Element 5, and uh, Timmerman Timmerworks. Okay, what prefab is not? This, this is really important. It is not a one-size-fits-all. I will not stand here as the owner of a prefab manufacturing company and tell you that it works anywhere in any situation, because it, it doesn't. It has a place uh, in the market where it works really, really well. And even for us, we have quite a narrow niche, um, and we're really careful about pre-qualifying that. Uh, it's a bit painstaking as a small business owner to say no to projects, but I've gotten really good at it because the ones that we take now, we know we can do really, really well, and we have a, a bunch of ways of how we do that. It's not a solution to all building problems. Uh, it's not the best building method out there, although I really think it's fantastic for, for certain uses, like I mentioned. Um, and prefab alone, as to say by itself, just prefabrication is not the silver bullet. Um, so let's talk about what we're gonna do to get there. Uh, this, is, this is just something that I, that Carson helped me put this together and we, we couldn't really figure out where to put this slide, but I said, but it's important to me that it's in here. Um, and I guess just because I want you to understand what I'm thinking as I'm talking about this. So uh, sure, we could adapt what we're doing for that. If you talk to a manufacturer or somebody who, who's looking to sell you uh, prefabricated or pre-designed anything, you should really think hard ab uh, uh, about <laughs> continuing forward or elaborate on the conversation and really understand what are these people good at, what's their specialty, and, and what is it that they're going to bring you. This is, uh, and if, if you've had any coordination with uh, us at Simple Life or maybe with me directly, you may, you may have received part of this snippet and because I wrote this almost as a reminder just to myself about why are we doing it this way? Why are we saying no? Because to be totally frank, sometimes it gets confusing we'll get a lead that comes in and I lose track of why we do or do not want to do those projects. And so I needed a reminder and, uh, and so we just wrote it out and it sounds something like this. We can consider wood buildings, either single or multifamily, four stories and under, that's a new piece that I'll come back to, uh, preferably within part nine, with a performance objective as an equal priority. Performance objective being net zero, passive house, any energy target or something similar like that, or, or maybe it's a sustainability target or, or, or something. Um, we found that, that <clears throat> what we need are SLH partners who, co who coordinate their designs with Simple Life Home standards rather than the reverse, which incurs expense on both sides, with the intention to have strategic partners who bring perennial work, not just one-off annual projects. Now, the last little bit of this, I was a bit <laughs> nervous to, to put in here, because you know, I probably wouldn't say that to any of you if you write into the company. But it's just a reminder to me about where, where are we finding traction and where do we think we can be really, really good. And so we're not trying to be everything to everybody. We've got this narrow little crack that we're just driving down really, 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 really deep. Um, and uh, in, you know, because that's where I think we can bring the most value. So moving on. Beyond prefab, well, you know, what's the point of this really is to say that uh, prefabrication has its place in this world, but we've got to do it the right way. Um, it's not us as a manufacturer alone. It's not you, the architects, by yourself. It's not the developer with a plan alone. It's not the contractor with a dream alone. It's not a building occupant with a desire alone. Although that would be great if building occupants were advocating for green, clean prefabrication. Um, but cannot achieve what altogether we can. Prefab offers far-reaching possibilities, but requires buy-in at all levels to reach those possibilities. So how do we, you know, how do we actually do this? Um, 
there are a lot of different housing typologies. You know, we all work on different sizes and scales of projects and in different areas um, as well, which is really, really critical. So this, again, this is, this is something that we're gonna talk about today. It's a step in the right direction, but it, it is not single-handedly going to solve all this, nor do I think it's the answer for everyone. But this is, uh, this is a approach. So the conversation usually starts off with, well, what are we talking about? Is it a single family project? Is it a multifamily project? Right away, that informs the rest of the conversation. Are we a fit as a, as a company? Can I bring value to you as the, as the owner, as the developer, as the architect? Uh, maybe, maybe not, it depends. So we keep going. Has it already been designed? Uh, is it custom? Is it you know, bespoke, one-off project that we'll never see again? Or can we replicate that and do it in other communities elsewhere? Um, IDP, I, can't, I couldn't figure out where to put this in here. Everyone's heard IDP, you know, integrated uh, 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 design, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I think on larger projects, this is happening probably more on, than it is on smaller projects, but I ask this question a lot, and... We do it. Yeah, mm, I would say I do it. I would say, yeah, I would say we do that. We have a few, you know, I mean, and, and there's a lot of familiar faces, you know, I know, I know lots of you here, we've, we've worked with some of you, um, <laughs> and I've, I've, you know, or if we haven't, then there's lots of other work that, that we've seen happening that's great, and I guess, I guess the challenge is that I don't, I don't think we're doing this enough, or we aren't going far enough with it. Um, and we can, there's more that we can do. Contracts is a really, really important piece of this. They're kind of boring, they're a little bit scary, it's not always what everybody wants to talk about, but it matters. The contracts inform the structure of the project. It's who's responsible for what, how are they gonna do it, when are they gonna do it, who's holding them accountable, and why does it matter? This is a whole, you know, Josie, you said something earlier that, that got me thinking. There's a whole nother uh, talk that I think we could just do about contracts. Public projects, don't even get me started. I'm super excited about them, uh, can't do them. Can't seem to figure out how to crack that code with prefabrication unless we can get really deep integration. And the early integration is really challenging because the contracts don't promote that. They don't, sometimes don't even allow that at all. Where, you know, <laughs> you as a designer could say, I have the solution, but I can't tell you what it is. And I really hope you just guess and, get, and, and you know, potentially use that right thing and, and get it right. Now, that's not always happening, I don't wanna just uh, uh, put that down. It's just one of the things that we've ran into that's been challenging. So CCDC 5B, that can work. Or the uh, 14, that's a little bit new to me. I, I'm not as familiar, but it's another one that we've been looking at recently. It can work. Um, so these are just some suggestions that you can consider if you find yourself on a project of that scale where you need to be using a CCDC. And, and, and for those of you who don't know, those are the standard Canadian construction documents. Um, I'm sure most of you do, but these ones are the sort of project management pro uh, contracts and what they allow for is us to sit at the table together, have a conversation at the beginning and really hash out um, how we're going to work on the project together. That's what's important about this. Uh, one of the ways that we do this with a private agreement is, is a design assist agreement, uh, almost as a consultant. So we will join your project as a you know, as a prefab uh, consultant, essentially. We're the manufacturer, we know our system really, really well, um, and as long as we can be that little birdie whispering in your ear throughout design saying, yes, that's gonna be great, or maybe perhaps don't do it that way, then uh, you know, that, that has a lot of advantages. And um, public projects. I'm, I'm hemming and hawing about this one because I'm very excited, and, I, and, and without naming names, you know, locally we have some amazing opportunities just they're very challenging and we'd love to be a part of them and to, you know we're just we're, we're struggling to figure out how um, and I don't think it's anyone's fault in particular and it's not that anyone doesn't want this to happen it's just challenging because the conventional way is to use those types of contracts uh, okay uh, a goal you need to understand what are the targets so even if we're joining that discussion late in the game if we can talk about that we might just say you know what we may not be the right fit for you because your goals uh, we either can't achieve or we can't do them on your timeline or we can't do them on your budget or, or maybe we can do all of them and fantastic, we're gonna, we're gonna move forward together and it's gonna be great. Performance targets, logistics are so important um, and vetted for alignment with the prefab manufacturer and their product to ensure maximized benefit for all involved. That could be any type of prefab, whether it's us, a CLT system, an NLT system, a, a modular unit, you know, you've, you've got to look at this stuff at the beginning because the manufacturer 
we have a little bit of flexibility in, in, in our assemblies and our details, and, but the way that we work, I should say the successful way that we can work is a little bit less flexible. And so we need to understand, no matter who the prefabricator is, the manufacturer, what's the system? And, and is it beneficial? And is it the right fit? Uh, BIM, take advantage of this. You know, again, like I said with IDP, we all talk about this, you hear about it. I mean, geez, Autodesk has you know, built their entire marketing program around this for a long time now. But are we actually using IFC files between professionals effectively? Is anybody? Five minutes, that's impossible. Okay, uh, I, can, I, I, can, I can fly through. A process, a well-defined, agreed-upon process, usually structured around the prefab manufacturer's existing product and process. Sometimes but I don't want that to scare you because it doesn't have to be so rigid. I get this a lot. Here are our completed plans. Can you please provide a price for your standard prefab package? Thank you for snickering. It is challenging. Yes, pricing is important. I have figured out a really great way with the help of my super team over here of how do we give people information very early on because we're asking for early engagement and you need information to make that decision, or, or your client does. You can't just say, I think you should go with the system and, you know, geez, I hope it works. Um, a better way to approach that, if I may recommend, here's our early stage project idea. Can we discuss the viability of your system for our project? Okay, really quickly, um, in my last few minutes here, these are two of the projects that we're working on. Single family residential, multifamily project you can do the range. Now, we're showing two-story uh, two, two townhouses here, so not huge multifamily projects. Um, we are working on some three-story, they're roughly 30 units, a uh, bit of a variation, and so that's really, really exciting. Same developer here. Uh, that residential house, pre-designed. Um, plan was already existing. Homeowners picked it out of a catalog, made some modifications, uh, we got uh, engaged in the project quite early on and uh, it went really quite well. Um, Pre-construction was pretty straightforward. Um, manufacturing was pretty straightforward. And that house we installed in two crane days. And on the third day we went around and we finished buttoning it up and finishing interior partitions and all those other things. And those were, yeah, 10 hour days. So you know, just to give you some reference. And that's with a crew of uh, three to five people. You know, and I would say, whoop, I've done something. I would say, um, you know, these are average uh, skilled workers. And so um, that was really, really exciting because the principles of what we did there, the idea is that there's no reason you can't scale that. The average crew could install a really quite a large building um, really, really efficiently. And most importantly, it's, Super healthy, super energy efficient. Um, we haven't done a blower door test on that particular project yet. It was just put up about a week ago. But we're usually seeing on houses of that size somewhere around 0.2 to 0.4 ACH, which is exciting. Um, and it's not super complicated to, to achieve that. Pre-installed details, a lot of repetition of the same details, fixing them, improving them, tweaking them. And now we're starting to do that on larger projects. So uh, what I'm really excited about here, though, is we're working hand in hand with this developer. There's three of these townhouses. There's five of these three-story buildings around the exterior of the property. And we are essentially a verti vertically integrated team, um, sort of by accident, honestly. We went through the first project. We had some things that uh, we said, you know, we could probably improve those with your, if, if you give us the opportunity. Um, and then what we ended up doing was getting engaged uh, in a way uh, deeper way with this developer. And it's quite exciting because now we're, um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're modifying the plans, we're making updates, um, and it's all about optimizing. But, but we're having the conversation, we're working together, we're integrated, our contracts are aligned, everybody is sitting at the table, I mean literally happy to be at the table together, comfortable, nobody's scrambling to make sure the contracts are good because they're not too sure about the other side. It's going really, really well, and it's a relief, and I hope I can do more of this, hopefully with more of you, or you guys doing this with other prefabricators, but get this stuff, uh, you know, sort it out early, as early as you possibly can. Final thoughts. Oh gosh, can I have one more minute for final thoughts? Well, just this time. Okay, well, it's essentially what I've been saying, you know, this whole time, is that you have to consider, you have to consider a lot more, a lot earlier on. 
And if you can do this, if you have the opportunity, take the little bit of extra time because it's so, so important. So big things like, you know, look at the zoning, look at the planning, look at the finances, think about the construction. All of that stuff impacts the project. Successful utilization of prefab system requires aligning project goals and needs right from the start, whether that's with the homeowner or developer for various reasons. Early engagement so you can understand how can we work with you effectively and are we, a right, are we the right fit? And you know, collaborative partnerships. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself, I recognize that. I'm doing this in, uh, on purpose because I just have to drive home the simple thought, which is with early engagement and if we can coordinate together, um, you know, we can do this in a different way and I think I'll be really successful. So I wish you luck with your projects. If you're considering a prefabricated system, call the manufacturer now that you're thinking about and get some information and start having that conversation. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ed.